Hey man, you ever looking to flatter? This was taken on December 6, 2019. I could have talked about uh, um, the Anclo power plant stack there. But what I want you to look at is uh, this is the Hernando Beach channel. And you see how this boat is being mirrored. It's being cut off. Um, and it's, it's being cut off by refraction and magnification. And what I mean by that is where we start getting this mirroring um, before the boat it's actually redirecting again our line of sight upward and cutting off the boat now here's the thing these islands are 4.84 miles away I know it is I've measured it uh, not only on my navigation maps but on Google Earth and my navigation maps say 4.84 miles now you see all those islands appear to be cut off but as I move along here and we start getting out of this mirroring zone and I believe that mirroring zone is caused partially by the angle of light um, difference in temperature when I'm looking to the south toward uh, Hudson there could be a 10 degree difference between there and Hernando County and then when I look south or north to uh, citrus, there could be another 10 to 15 degree difference in temperature, not only in the water, but also in the air. That's why I say now you look here at this part of the island. Now, that little pole that sticks up, that's where I film uh, the Huts Hudson Beach uh, condos is right from that area right there. And that looks completely in the water, not getting cut off. And then you also see these little rock islands that really have nothing on them, and they're very dangerous to try to get on to film from. I wanted to, but uh, nah, that's a, it's a lot of sharp rocks and everything, and there's like three islands there that I went across, and then you got some of these little other islands that um, stick out. And this is from where they dredged the channel out, folks. Um, and I'm not even fully zoomed in, but... You see the channel markers cleanly in the water. Um, and, you know, of course, the boat, the closer boat um, is there. And you actually see stuff way farther out there. There was the um, Bill Watts rack. And then here I'm going to come up to uh, uh, the Hernando Beach rack. Now, I've measured all these. Um, the Hernando Beach rack is approximately six miles. And then again, look at this boat right here. You wonder why the ass ends of them get, get cut off. All depending on what angle this boat is coming in at you, the wake of the boat itself will block you out. Or this misty water that's uh, squirting out the side of it, creating its wake. Um, also, you know, the faster the boat goes, the more you'll see this boat on top of the water, the slower it goes, the more the ass end sticks down and the more wake it creates, which does block you out from seeing that. Just see how that light's shining on that water? Um, that will literally illuminate, just like you see it behind the boat. It illuminates and it blocks you out. And that illumination looks just like the background of the sky back here. And that's what you're seeing just above the visible water is just mirroring sky. Okay, here's the Hernando Beach rack. I'm seeing it completely out of the water perfectly. Now, this is six miles away compared to the islands that were 4.8, 8, 4.84 miles. And look at that. That one was perfectly in the water. And 
man, I mean, these angles that I look at, again, sometimes I look to the north. Um, I get better visibility. I can see farther than I can to the south. And sometimes it's vice versa. And what I've been noticing is, is where the sun is located at in the sky. Now, right here is where the sun is actually shining on the water. This is the, the sun shining real hard. And you can see this uh, light refraction, okay, blocking out part of the bottom of that boat. Light reflects up, folks, not down. But science wants to tell you that this magical force of bendy light or bendy, uh, well, bendy light can look over bendy water and show you what's on the other side. It is virtually impossible. If anything, I mean, think about it, folks. What What's more common sense? Um, light reflect, ref, <laughs> reflecting up, blocking out your visibility, or this magical force of light bending something up from around the corner, um, you know, uh, a lot of these bird racks are anywhere between 14 and 16 feet tall. So, you know, you can't have it both ways where it's refracting up and refracting down. It's normally reflecting up because that's how light works off of a reflective surface. Now, look at this. Normally, okay, and this is uh, seven to eight miles away. That was the Billy Steele's rack. <laughs> And wait, I want to show you when I get to the um, north rack, which is seven to eight miles away, too. Um, it seems like the more I am I go to my right, there's the Bayport rack <laughs> with rocks sticking up. And those rocks look big. And I didn't fully zoom in on uh, uh, the Bayport rack, but I want to do a video on, on some of these racks where... I can literally show you at full zoom, sometimes they look bigger, sometimes they look smaller, sometimes they look compressed, sometimes they look stretched. It all depends on the atmosphere conditions. And what I'm looking at here is a wake from a previous boat that went by, or just the waves. And again, this wave or this wake can be blocking out quite a bit of the horizon, whether people like it or not. Now here's a sign that I, I see sometimes, and it's it looks a lot bigger than normal. Wow! It's like, why does it look bigger? Because it is being magnified. Now, one of the things that I did notice was I could not see Cutter's Rock at all because of this big, big glare out. Also, I think that there's something else going on here, which I'm going to try to do a test to show what I'm talking about instead of just tell you because if I tell you uh, you know uh, I might confuse you more when I start trying to do a test to show you um, so I'd rather just show you firsthand um, what I'm talking about um, but I think there's um, there's multiple lensing effects that are occurring and stuff that's out there further depending on the light Okay, look at this boat. Okay, now I zoom in all the way on this boat. And he is way out there, folks. Way out there. And here's something, too. I run into these folks out on the um, on the deck. Now, I'm up on the observation deck. Um, I'm not going to lie to you. Uh, and that's why you see some of this wiggling. Because there's people up there walking around, stomping around on the deck and when people are up there believe me it is very hard to keep this thing steady especially if there is a little bit of a breeze so again people do people say oh you need to get a better tripod when you they see it all shaky but they don't realize that you know hey i'm i'm working in some harsh conditions sometimes um but like I say, I, I do run into some folks up here, and I start talking to him, and he likes my camera because he comes up there with his big old uh, Canon camera with a big old lens on it. And I'll, I'll leave that, uh, that part of the audio on, um, except for where he, um, I don't know, he uses some, kind of, some tough language there. Uh, but there's your uh, uh, North Rack, and when you compare it to Billy Steele's, 
there's no comparison and really they're both about the same distance from me Have you seen any dolphin out here? No, it's just a boat way out there that you can't see. I can see it. It's a long way. Can you can you see that boat? I see it's see that either boat? a boat and something else too. You see no no no. That ain't where my camera's pointing. Wow. Yeah, you put you can't put your hand there. Oh, oh I do. <laughs> Oh, you I, sure are. You're pointing somewhere else. Okay. <laughs> you can't see it with your eyes. You, you can't. <laughs> you don't even see that rack right there. Is that rack? Uh, it's supposed to be on the other side of the curve. So that's clearly digital. So. Was that supposed to be on the other side of the curve? Right. Oh, is it really? Yeah. Okay. What's the, what, what's the distance on the digital zone? It's 120, yeah. Okay. It's 125 times zoom. That makes sense. Yeah, I get uh, the rings of Saturn with it. So what is this? It's a Nikon, Coolpix P1000. There's no interchangeable lens. It's all just one lens. 24 to 3000. Wow. Okay. That is about as interchangeable as I've ever heard of in my entire life. Yeah. You know. It's a CMOS sensor. Crop sensor. Yeah. Okay. You don't. You don't. There's no interchangeable lens or nothing on it. Okay. Just zoom in, zoom out. What's the aperture on it? I can I can set the aperture on. Yeah, but you can't do you can't do a two eight all the way at three thousand though. No. Okay. No. No. I wish I could. Right, that's what I was gonna say. <laughs> you can shoot the Milky Way. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well actually I've shot the um, nebula in Orion's belt. Have you really? Yeah, taking okay. pictures of all right, I took uh, these pictures of uh, the nebula on Orion's belt uh, on the 21st. I should have just looked at the screen. <laughs> 2020, uh, January 21st. Um, and you can see it was pretty late at night. Um, and these are raw. I mean, as far as it, it's just the way it come off my camera. I didn't do nothing special to it. Um, you know, I usually have my camera just set at one setting. Um, sometimes I do play around with the, the lighting as far as uh, uh, the, the daylight setting, whether it be up higher or lower. Um, and then there's a, another setting that I play around with. And for crying out loud, I, <laughs> I can't even remember what it is. Uh, but anyhow, uh, it, it does change uh, the brightness on it. Uh, but, you know, when you're doing uh, uh, really fast exposure with your ISO, now I have my ISO turned up really high, but I'm doing like one three hundredths of a second of a snapshot on these. So, you know, it's, it's a pretty fast shot. Um, and it surprises me that I'm able to pick up um, what I do with this camera. Um, and then when you get back to this video, I'm going to let some of the natural audio play again. Um, and here it comes. Most that I'll do is use a two times extender on my, what, on my 300. So the most I get is 600, but then I guess on a, a crop sensor, I'm at 900. Yeah. But 3,000. You know, that's, that's a hell of a shot. <laughs> yeah, it's called Beyond the Horizon. <laughs> Yeah, you know, science used to say they knew the Earth was round because they could watch ships sail over the sea, over the curvature. Right. Well, I can zoom in on them. <laughs> so, so I got a, I, I got a uh, uh, magic camera. She's over curves. Right. And round corners too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what I like about this one too is I can adjust the. Um, the compensation exposure down to okay as it, as it's uh, recording okay so you know that like the sun I can crank it up right so like for doing like sun spots right a lot of times I don't even need the uh, the ND 1000 or okay the ND filters a lot of times I I can just zoom right in on it but uh, I, I kind of like using the ND because Do I don't want to fry my sensor. I find them cumbersome. I mean, I don't even want to carry all that stuff yeah. all, all the time. 
That's why I love this camera. Uh, for a thousand dollars, it was well Is worth it. Is that all? That's it. Wow. Yeah. That's and, cheaper than this lens. And this was like, oh, yeah. That's way cheaper than this lens. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Right. But he's saying so. So this lens right here is a seventy to two hundred. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think I ought to ask Nikon for a commission for selling them cameras because I've had a lot of people come up, ask me about my camera, I show them how it works and everything, and they are impressed and they want to buy one. Uh, especially this guy right here. You know, he said for a secondary camera, he couldn't beat it because he wouldn't have to carry around all the lenses, all the other crap that you have to carry around with those cameras. And those little spots you see are probably just little uh, dirt or little water droplets that uh, dried on my camera lens. But I hope you all learned something and thanks for watching.